Good morning everyone once again to our live webinar on Facebook Live dealing with Q&A on child maintenance and child custody by myself advocate Mohammed Abdelouf. I'm a practicing advocate in Cape Town. I specialize generally in family law matters. I do other legal matters as well as I'm called upon to do but on family law matters I'm quite au fait. I've been practicing it for over 15 years and every day I learn more things that's why it's a legal practice and not a legal perfect every day you're practicing the law if you have any questions on child custody and child maintenance feel free to pose it but it needs to be on the advocate Muhammad Abdul Facebook page as you can see above that's the page where you have to um, leave a comment and I will answer it. I see we have one question. Let me just get to it. Let us do this. Copy it. This is question number one. Thank you for that. If question number one and any other question is succeeding, question number one, want to add anything, just mention question number one or mention number one and your additional comment it gets a bit messy on the Facebook live page okay the question is as follows and you can all see it on your screen I applied for maintenance against the father and I suspect he has taken retrenchment after we served him the papers I can't claim for future maintenance what can I do it's a challenging answer because do you want me to be creative here and take the presumption that he will not pay child maintenance and we need to now attach his pension fund, his pension payout or if you have a concern that he will not pay then it could possibly mean that you would like to get a lump sum held somewhere but that hasn't been um, confirmed yet and the court did not decide on what amount of maintenance is reasonable is your claim reasonable should you be claiming more should you be claiming less what can you afford you might have obtained a retrenchment payout or will be receiving a retrenchment payout what is that amount is it a huge amount of money is it required for his specific living needs he worked he worked for that he worked and he paid money every month into a retrenchment or retirement fund I'm just being general here and now it needs to be paid out and he needs to use that money to look after himself if he complies with his maintenance obligations and he pays whatever needs to be paid then he can do whatever he wants to do with that money it's his money and that's my policy always that as long as you pay your child support do a reasonable child support what the children requires and what you can afford and in terms of your means and so on considering all factors the other parties the primary caregivers income expenditure as well you can live the most lavish life you want to because you have complied with your obligations I would presume the same applies to to tax if you pay your tax you can do whatever you want to do with the balance of your money the same with child maintenance Pay it and that's fine so in answering your question the court first needs to determine whether or not there's a claim for child sorry there's a a competent claim for child maintenance in the sense of is the amount that you're requiring or you claim from the other party isn't it a re, is it a reasonable amount of money and is it a, an amount allowed in law when I say amount amount um, an amount allowed in law I mean based upon your income your expenditure the father's income and, and his expenditure, his future um, income, he might be cashing in on a, on a retrenchment package, but at the same time, he might be working elsewhere as well. Or furthermore, he might have other assets. So the long and short of it is, please finalize the maintenance matter as soon as possible. Speak to the maintenance court about the retrenchment package. Mention that he is obtaining it. Maybe the maintenance court can obtain relevant information regarding that. So you have relevant data regarding the specific retention pay, retrenchment payout. 
and after you have obtained all that information and a maintenance order has been made and it does not pay maintenance then you can start looking around and saying no we now want to start attaching the specific money that he has in his bank account wherever it is but i think your claim might be pretty mature now because you made a maintenance claim against the father he is not in violation of any order and there's no reason to believe that he will not be paying maintenance in the future if he does do that he's committing a criminal offense and then you can proceed with a, and a different claim either garnish your order um, attachment of an amount of money whatever the case may be so then you'll be in a better position to deal with that i'll go on to the question you are question number one you're welcome to pose any additional questions upon that I have question number two. Let me copy and paste that into the, the screen. As men I mentioned earlier, on, if you have any, uh, I'm sorry, if you're watching this video, please feel free to um, say where you're from, where you're watching this video from. It's always nice to know that. So this will be mark number two, and I'll delete this part. I call this a whiteboard. I don't know if that's an appropriate term to use. Let's deal with this. Which act explains exactly how subpoena has to be served on a person? Please, can you state the act? It's but difficult because then you will have the you know the the regulations, uh, civil procedure that would apply, the Magistrates Court Act, the Magistrates Magistrates Court's rules. Then if it's a High Court, the High Court Act, the High Court rules. And then if it's in terms of maybe the maintenance laws, the Maintenance Act might have certain regulations applicable or not. So. Um, it depends on, on, on those things, but I think that will be a bit premature for me to discuss that, you know. Um, the best, I would say, is determine that you want to obtain a subpoena, you approach the relevant court and advise the court you want to obtain a subpoena, and the court should be able to assist you with obtaining a subpoena for whatever reasons is required. The court issues a subpoena in any event. Um, if, it's a, if, it's, if it's a Magistrates Court matter, look at the Magistrates Court Act and the rules on the Magistrates Court. I would advise you to do that. If it's a High Court matter, look at the High Court rules and the Supreme Court Act, if I'm correct. Let's move on. An additional question to question two. I'll just do this. What are the specific processes that has to be followed? Can I collect a subpoena from the court, take it to the police station? And also police officers to serve the accused. So an accused is a criminal matter. So you don't subpoena a criminal, uh, an alleged criminal. Um, the that person gets, if the person must be subpoenaed, it will be subpoenaed by the police officer, by the by the criminal process. So I do not understand. Are we referring it to a maintenance matter? Possibly, I do not know. Or am I allowed to do this? Is there a specific process? As a commander of the police station was trying to convince me there is another way. Only the court can send it to the police station. I disagree as I have personal experience of this. Thank you. I, I do not feel this falls under the category of um, child custody and child maintenance and it's a procedural aspect. Um, the best thing I would advise you to do is have a look at the law, um, speak to an attorney, um, say you are obtaining his services, can he serve the specific subpoena on the party? Um, I don't know what type of subpoena it is. It is for non-compliance with maintenance order. It's a maintenance application um, subpoena, criminal, civil. So those are all different uh, specific scenarios that would apply. Um, I hope you good luck with the specific issue you have. But it doesn't really fall under the topic of today's discussion being child maintenance and child custody um, issues. Not necessarily civil procedure or criminal procedure and how to um, bring someone to court. That would be the court's job or alternatively an attorney, but it's a different topic i hope that assists you and i'm sorry i couldn't be of i could not be of any additional assistance regarding that okay i think we have question number three let us copy that one quickly question number two if you have any additional comments that you're welcome to mention it and i'll paste it and i'll i'll answer it you know i might my answer might be the same it might be different depending upon the the facts Question number three also following, what does it cost to get equal custody and time with my son? Um, I would presume you're referring to financial cost uh, in legal fees. Um, so it can be free, 
because if you approach the main, sorry, if you approach the children's court, you can represent yourself. It can be further free if you um, approach the, the high court um, it, you and represent yourself. There will be no costs applicable. If you want to appoint a legal representative, I cannot thumb suck here how much it will cost. It will, depends on various factors. The lawyer's hourly rate, how much time he has to spend on your case, time drafting, court appearances, and so on. Is the matter opposed? If the matter is opposed, meaning the other side wants to fight against you, then the cost can be for anything from here till there. How many people, how much people does the party want to throw into the car? So for every strike the other party makes, you need to defend and counter punch, for lack of a, of a better way of stating it. Um, so I cannot say how much it will cost, but I do know some matters are done very speedily. Unopposed matters are quite sim simpler than opposed matters. Unopposed meaning the other parties are opposing the relief sought. And, you know, the court orders have to determine the case based upon what you are saying and what's best for the child based upon what you are saying. Um, I do not want to guess High Court, Magistrate's Court. I do not want to put any figures out there. It will, it will just be my, a guess and the guy sitting next to me can be non -law. He can His guess will be just as good as my guess. Um, but if the matter is unopposed, it will be reasonable, you can fix the amount more or less, you know, it's an application either in the High Court or the Magistrate's Court. If the matter is opposed, the fees can just spiral, postponement after postponement possible, or it can be done very simplistically, depending upon the court, depending upon the judge, depending upon the facts. I hope that answers question number three. I see question number two posed another question, or comment, sorry, it does for the sake of fairness for everyone. I, I would like to give to justice to all my questioners. I do not want you to think that I don't deal with you. Yes, it's a maintenance matter. So I presume it's a criminal complaint for non-compliance with the maintenance order. It's not your job to serve the subpoena and I don't think you should. You can serve the subpoena. A police officer must should serve the subpoena under these circumstances. I honestly do not believe that you can do that under these circumstances. It's a, it sounds like a criminal matter referring to an accused and it's not the complainant's job to serve it. And the final comment would be no problem and thank you. You are welcome. Any additional comments? If I'm quite incorrect, if it's a civil matter, an application for maintenance order, or subpoenaing the party, or calling the party to court for an application for reduction or an increase, let us know and we will deal with that. Here, yeah, question number one had an additional comment. Let me copy that in quickly. Let us get that into the system. Question number one, that's him or her. I went to court and they said I must return on my court date on 22nd of March. So I suspect um, he will finish the money. He only has two years of service in the company. So I would advise you under those circumstances that you need to maybe approach a maintenance court and tell them your dilemma. It does not mean he will not pay maintenance afterwards. If there is that apprehension and he presume he will be, not be paying maintenance, then obviously, then obviously you need to act upon it. I do not know the amount of money you're talking to. He only worked here for two years, so I presume that the, the maintenance amount won't be, sorry, the the retrenchment amount won't be that huge. Also depends upon how much a person is earning. So it's a difficult situation to deal with because you are making the, the claim, the allegation that you know you will not pay maintenance and therefore need to attach this retrenchment amount because you are afraid that you will not pay the maintenance afterwards. But you have not determined whether or not it is a, a justified claim in the amount. And we, we haven't determined based upon the whether or not what your portion of maintenance should be and what the other person's portion of maintenance maintenance should be. Sometimes it's a bit hard to give these webinars because you're talking to a screen, you're not seeing anyone. Um, I think we do upgrade these webinars where we are allowing people to um, join us via voice as well and we can incorporate that into our video. So you can call in via WhatsApp, we will get the sound into the system and everybody would be able to hear that. And maybe going one step further, we can have those people who want to engage with us via video, we can stream them in via Zoom as well, and we can put them onto the screen. But for that, I might require some 
additional assistance. I hope it answers question number one's answer. You need to get the maintenance matter done as soon as possible and alternatively what you could possibly do now is go to the maintenance court and mention to them your concerns. Here's another question, question number four. Let me copy it in. Therefore, if, if question number one, two, or three has any additional comments, you're welcome to pose it. Just mention question number one, two, or three. Question number four comment is the following. If I have lost contact with the father of my child and we have had a maintenance order in place, he has not paid maintenance in three years and I have not gone back to court to report lack of payment. What are my next steps in terms of getting him to start paying and what happens to the real amount? It's a bit of an easy question to answer and thank you for the question. The real amount continues despite. The court order, the court made an order, a maintenance order is a valid order. Done. Therefore, he has to comply with the order and is committing a criminal offence by not complying with the order. So the year stands. So the year, I'm using a silly figure here, uh, 1,000 and per month. He didn't pay for three, three years. That will be how much? It will be 36,000 and he owes you that amount of money. What can you do? I would advise you, number one, to go to the maintenance court as soon as possible. There is no time lapse for that. And lay a complaint against him. More than likely, they'll follow the criminal route and they will subpoena him to the criminal court. And more than likely, he will start paying or come to some type of an agreement, some type of an arrangement. The civil route would obviously be that they can start attaching his property. But I would actually advise you, start of the process, he owes you the money and he has to pay it. First step, go to the maintenance court and they should be able to assist you. And they will assist you. The very bare minimum they should do is find out where this person is, subpoena him to court, and start the process. I hope it answers your question. You can still do something. And my advice to you is, whatever proof you have that it has not paid, so if he had to pay into your bank account, you need to come with statements to show that the court order says he had to pay into this specific bank account. Here are the details of the bank account. Here are the statements for the last three years. I presume you have those, those that specific proof. If you do not have that proof and we can't get it, he can make that allegation. But I have been paying her and he'll know that you only have evidence for the last 12 months and you have nothing else to prove. The court will obviously believe him because you, those who allege, must prove. And that's my advice to you. Make sure that you can prove to the court that he has not been paying. I hope it answers question number four's question or comment. If there are any additional comments or questions, feel free to pose it and I'll try my best to answer it. Please remember, if you're watching this video, the Advocate Muhammad Abdullah Facebook page. Just above there, see his post questions on Advocate Muhammad Abdullah. Type that into Facebook and you should get a page. And if this, while this video is streaming, this video will appear on that specific page. We're also now allowing or making it possible for you to pose your questions before the time if you are not available at the next webinar i unfortunately cannot stipulate what time it will be with this COVID 19 and judges and courts having different ways of operating you must wait for your phone call you only find out the morning whether or not it will be virtually done or via in person and and so on so it's a bit challenging but i try to do these webinars at about between eight so between 9 and 10 o'clock and yesterday's webinar was the afternoon um, because I was in court the entire morning but however that's how it goes and we'll try our best but if you have a question and I and you're not available to watch these webinars or you do not know what time it will be you're welcome to message us that question on the Advocate Muhammad Abdullah Facebook page message say question for the next webinar you must mention that um, question for the next webinar otherwise I wouldn't know is it, is it a question, a general question, or is it a question for the webinar? So mention question for the next webinar. The, these are the facts. And at the next webinar, I will pre-post it onto the whiteboard so we can start dealing with that immediately. Then when you come back from work or wherever you are or you have free time, watch the video. And I should have dealt with that specific question. I have a, another comment. Oh, the 
Krishna says, thanks, you are welcome. The last question, question number four. You're welcome, and um, I hope that answers your... Oh, sorry, we did answer your specific question. If there are any additional questions, feel free to pose it. Otherwise, I think that's our webinar for today. 20 minutes of live streaming. Um, if there aren't any, I thank you for your time, for watching this webinar, and I will see you online tomorrow morning again. It will be in the morning. Uh, most probably between 9 and 10 sometime. But um, if you have any questions before the time, please feel free to post it. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you online soon. Thank you very much.